On this historic occasion, we welcome the distinguished team from Wiley College, our illustrious judges, you the audience, and through the wonder of radio, the nation. Harvard University celebrates its 300th anniversary this year, and in Franklin Delano Roosevelt, its fifth president of the United States. But no university, no matter how grand or august in its history, can afford to live in the past. So, in the spirit of tomorrow, I introduce to you today the debaters from Wiley College, Ms. Samantha Book, Mr. James Farmer, Jr. Mr. Farmer will argue the first affirmative. Resolved. Civil disobedience is a moral weapon in the fight for justice. But how can disobedience ever be moral? Well, I guess that depends on one's definition of the words. Word. In 1919, in India, 10,000 people gathered in Amritsar to protest the tyranny of British rule. Has it started? Shh, shh, your brother's talking. Just sit down. General Reginald Dyer trapped him in a courtyard and ordered his troops to fire into the crowd for 10 minutes. 379 died. Men, women, children shot down in cold blood. Dyer said he had taught them a moral lesson. Gandhi and his followers responded not with violence, but with an organized campaign of non-cooperation. Government buildings were occupied. Streets were blocked with people who refused to rise, even when beaten by police. Gandhi was arrested, but the British were soon forced to release him. He called it a moral victory. The definition of moral, Dyer's lesson or Gandhi's victory? You choose. <laughs> 